Today, let's share five reasons why Jesus came to the world. And we shall be looking at it from the book of 1 John. Among all the books in the Bible, the book of John is one of the most important books to every believer because it reveals the way through which we can get salvation. And John tried his best to put this thing before time so that we should be able to understand and should not be misled or accept the things which are not true about Jesus. Number one, Jesus came to be our sin bearer. Let's read it from First John chapter 3 verse 5 it read thus and you know that jesus came to take away our sins there is no sin in him when we study the book of john chapter 1 from verse 1 to 14 we understand that jesus was the word of god which became flesh and live among us as the incarnate of God but when we compare this with 2nd Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9 and Galatians chapter 4 verse 4 we understand that the essential purpose of the incarnate of, of God was not that our Lord might become our example or a teacher but that he may or he might be our sin bearer according to john the baptist in john chapter 1 verse 29 jesus is the lamb of god that takes away the sins of the world and in the days ahead we shall be discussing about how was jesus the, the lamb of god Number two, Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. First John chapter 3 verse 8b. It reads thus, For the Son of God came to destroy those works of the devil. When we study Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14, Revelation chapter 20 verse 10, and Mark chapter 3 verse 27 we understand that Jesus came to destroy Satan and to restore all that we have lost through Satan evil's work Jesus did this when he died on the cross of Calvary Jesus illustrate this in John chapter 10 verse 10 so that we can understand better it reads us the thief's purpose is to steal and kill but my purpose is to give life in all its fullness so this is one of the reasons why jesus came to destroy the works of the devil do not let anyone deceive you that jesus is coming again to destroy Jesus did this already when he died on the cross of Calvary for our sins so be aware of the teachings of Antichrist number three Jesus come Jesus came to give us internal life first John chapter 4 verse 9 it reads thus this is how he shows his love among us he sent his one and only son into the war that we might live through him this is also one of the biggest problem in the world whether jesus was the son of god or was not the son of god but the bible tells us that god shows his love to us by sending his son jesus christ 
that we that through him we may have internal life. Notice that our greatest our greatest need in the world is salvation. There is nothing that I need more than salvation. If I get anything, everything in the world without salvation, I am a loser. So we must be able as believer to get the, the salvation in the right way. It's not all ways that we can it's not all ways that we can get salvation. In Acts chapter 4, verse 12, the apostle guided us to understand that salvation is only through Jesus Christ. And it came about as a result of Jesus' death on the cross. And we have to understand that since brought death upon all of us, the human race, when we talk about death, we talk about spiritual separation from God. And if you want to understand it, you study the book of Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Jesus came to give us eternal life. When we study first, when we study John chapter 3, from verse 15 to 17, we we'll see that the purpose why Jesus came was that we should have eternal life. Now, do you know if you possess internal life and have the assurance that you have passed from death into life you can move on and study the book of john chapter 5 verse 24 and this will help you number four jesus came to be the atoning sacrifice for sin first john chapter 4 verse 10 it reads thus this is real love. It is not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as a, as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Jesus Christ did not just come to take away our, our sins, but He offered Himself as a sacrifice for our sins. I don't think there's something greater than this again in the world. That Jesus sacrificed himself that we may have life. And uh, we also need to understand why it was Jesus, or why Jesus qualified to take away the sins of the world. Antichrist will tell you that the sacrifice of Jesus was not important. Oh, Jesus was not Jesus was not crucified. But when we study the scripture, we understand the reason why Jesus has to be crucified. Because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins, according to Hebrews chapter nine. In First Peter chapter two verse twenty four, it says. He personally, he who, he Jesus, he personally carries away our sins in his body on the cross so that we can, so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. He has been healed. He has been healed, we have been healed by his wounds. Finally, and lastly, number five, he came to be the savior of the world. We we'll read this from First John chapter four, verse fourteen. And we have seen, and we have seen with our own eyes, and now testify that the Father has sent His Son to be the savior. Of the world. Jesus Christ is the universal Savior. 
you can reject it or accept it but notice that you cannot change the fact jesus is the savior of the world the only means through which we can get salvation is through jesus christ and he accomplished this on the cross of calvary this salvation is sufficient for all people everywhere in the world without any exception the salvation was not for the jews as some people claim it was not for the people of those days as others claim it was for everybody let's let's discuss a little bit about salvation by studying two scripture in the bible i want us to study luke chapter 2 verse 10 to 11 and john chapter 4 verse 39 to 12 and after we shall be able to answer the question does it mean that everyone is saved this is the biggest problem in the world and because people make a lot of claim and a lot of assumption that because jesus already died for our sins we can do anything and since we are already saved no let's study the scripture we we'll start from Luke chapter 2, verse 10 to 11. The angel said, Notice also that this was the, the angel message to the shepherd on Christmas Day. Even though the word Christmas is not mentioned here, but it was during the, the birth of Jesus. And since we consider the birth of Jesus to be Christmas, it means that it was on Christmas Day. And I think this is the message that every Christian should take you uh, should take it home on Christmas or they should remind themselves of this message. The angel said, Do not be afraid, for I bring you good news of great joy for everyone. Everyone means in the entire world. The birth of Jesus was a good news. Not only to the people of those times, but to everybody living in the world today. Verse 11. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born tonight in Bethlehem, the city of David. This is my point. This is my point of interest. That Jesus was born. The birth of Jesus was a great, was to bring great joy to everybody. So each and everyone must desire this great joy about the birth of Jesus Christ. Now, John chapter 4, verse 39 to 41 talks about. Uh, the number of uh, Samaritans that believe in Jesus after Jesus met with the woman at the well and she went to call the people to come and listen to Jesus. And going back now to our question that does it mean that everybody it's itself? There are many ways to answer it through the scripture. But I will only use one verse to answer this. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25. Therefore, he is able once and forever to save everyone who comes to God through him. He lives forever to please with God on their behalf. There are many things to note in this particular verse the first thing is that jesus is able once and forever which means that there was never a time through which he cannot do it at every time he is able to serve everyone not only the israelite 
not only Christian, not only the white, but he is able to serve everyone who comes to God through him. This is where the problem is. Most people reject Jesus and try to get to God. And this is why salvation becomes difficult for them to acquire. Because in John chapter 14 verses, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. Which means that if you want to reach the Father, you must go through Jesus. If you go through other ways, go through religion, go through other prophets, I guarantee you, you won't get there. You must go through Jesus to the Father. And for the first reason is that why you need to go through Jesus so that he can save you. And secondly, so that he can please with God on your sins. So you seek to have salvation through other ways, you won't get it. So those who are saved are those who goes to God through Jesus Christ, who is able once and forever to save everyone from the punishment of sin. Also, to be saved, we must call upon and trust Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior from sin. This is according to Romans chapter 10, verse 13. One thing with salvation is that you can know and for sure that you have salvation. It is not guesswork. You don't need to guess whether you have it or not. If you follow the path or the formula to get the salvation, there's nothing to be doubting about for the bible did not keep us in doubt the bible is plain to us because of the love that god has for us he shows us how we can get to him how we can get salvation So, you need to know this and remind yourself every day of the reason why Jesus came to the world. First, he came to be a bearer of our sins. And uh, secondly, he, comes to, he came to destroy the works of the devil. He came to give us eternal life. Fourth, He came to be an atoning sacrifice for our sins. And finally, He came to be the Savior of the world. But I want you to note that these are not the only reasons why Jesus came to the world. But these are the reasons why Jesus came to the world as far as salvation is concerned because there are other important reasons in which you are going to get into it like Jesus came to correct our perception about the person of God and many other reasons why Jesus came into the world in which we need to know as believer so that we should not be misled don't allow the devil to fool you, to deceive you in believing that Jesus did not do these things. The Bible did not leave us in doubt. The Bible keep us in place, in the right positions to understand why Jesus came to the world, what he has done, what he has accomplished for us. 
because of his love. Let us focus on our salvation. Focus. Remind us of how the salvation comes about. And this is the greatest thing among the things God has shown to us that Jesus loves us. Let's breathe.